Utah's already proven they can be the best in the Pac-12. They've done it two consecutive years with conference championships. Now the Utes move on to the Big 12. How will the Utes fare in the Big 12? How have they fared in the Big 12? Let's take a look right here at the Voice of College Football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. Keeping in mind as we check out the results of Utah versus the Big 12, very rare for the Utes to take on any of the teams in the Big 12 outside of that holy war rival. Let's check it out. After playing a slew of games against the Big 12 in recent years, Utah did not face this conference in 2022, but in 21, getting off to a rough start, Utah eventually won the Pac-12, of course, their first of two back-to-back championships in the Pac-12. They lost to BYU, a 10-3 team, 26-17. Of course, BYU has yet to play a game in the Big 12. They're a member going forward, but not in the results that we're looking at. So some people have conjectured and said, hey, Mark, why are you considering BYU, Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF in these results? Well, we're looking forward. We're looking at past results to get a gauge on what could happen going forward. So we want to see, in this case, what Utah has done against current Big 12 members. Therefore, we're not looking at Utah's games against the likes of Texas and Oklahoma. Of course, they just played the Longhorns a couple years ago in the 2019 Alamo Bowl, not looking at that game. So we continue on with the Utes against the Big 12, a win against BYU in 2019, and in 2018 against two Cougar teams that finished at 7-6, and six, a win over a marginal BYU team, marginal to be kind, at 4-9. and nine. West Virginia was the opponent in the Heart of Dallas Bowl, the defunct Heart of Dallas Bowl, 30-14. to 14. Utes in that one. More games against BYU, and the Utes usually win these games. They Certainly did uh, here in the 2000s that they as they went on a long, long run against the Big 12. Count them up, about 10 or 12 consecutive wins against the Big 12. And again, almost all of these games against BYU, except we see in 2010, a huge, enormous win against Iowa State pre-Matt Campbell. So now we see a transition of Utah pre-Pac-12 and they had conference games against TCU. So we're going to see now a lot of BYU and TCU against Utah. And we see Utah winning most of the games. But still, TCU was awfully good in 2010 as they won the Rose Bowl that year and defeated Utah 47-7. to And 2009, TCU awfully good at 12-1, and won 55-28. Prior to the 2005 matchup against an 11-1 Horn Frog team, it was more games exclusively against BYU. So we will put this in context. So don't worry. We know that there aren't many games against the Big 12 other than a lot against BYU and a few against TCU. So we've got a volume of games here, 28, but really not much information because it's mostly against BYU and it's against a pre-Big 12 TCU program that was a really good program that dominated in the group of five, especially during the end of Gary Patterson's tenure in the group of five before they transitioned to the Big 12. But for a school that has 28 games against a particular conference since 2000, not uh, a real good sample size in terms of the variety of opponents. So when you add it all up, it's 28 games at 19 and 9 against the Big 12, 2 and 0 in bowl matchups, 4 and 8 against ranked teams. So this is interesting to note because Utah did run up against ranked top 25 teams 12 times and despite the overall record being good, they went 15 and 1 against non-ranked teams, 4 and 8 against ranked teams. Point differential, Utah in good shape at plus 146 over the course of 28 games or about 5 points per game. And we see that these teams that uh, Utah has faced in the Big 12 and again, most of these are not Big 12 teams. Most of these in the past are BYU as an independent or in a shared conference situation with Utah and these Big 12 teams are Exactly two to one ratio of wins to losses at 238 and 119. And Utah has been roughly the same. So they have faced like competition in terms of record. And consider that Utah has played in the Pac-12 for the last 10 years. So these matchups against BYU have come against an independent that some would consider a power of five and some would consider a group of five. Both are valid points. So the record with Utah and the Big 12 teams that they faced being almost even it's pretty impressive that the Utes are 19 and 9. During Utah's stay in the Pac-12, they're 96 and 53. They are 60 and 44 in conference play. 
Now, in the Mountain West prior to that, from 2000 on, the Utes were successful at 96 and 42, 58 and 25. And again, the Utes, along with TCU and Boise State for the first decade of the 2000s, of course, the poster children for challenging the Power Five and succeeding many times. And of course, the crown jewel of that was the 2009 Sugar Bowl after the 08 season in which Utah upset a 12-1 and Alabama team. But yeah, success in the Mountain West. And after a, a bit of a transition period in the Pac-12, success in the Pac-12 in the past two conference championships in the past three out of four conference championship games. During this time, Utah has finished in the top 10 three times. They finished in the top 25 10 times since the year 2000. And Kyle Whittingham, despite losing some recent bowl games in the Rose Bowl, most notably against Ohio State and Penn State, Utah faring well under Whittingham in postseason competition at 13-5. and five. They've won a couple Pac-12 championships, of course, in the last two seasons. Before that, no Pac-12 championships. And in the Mountain West, three conference championships. As mentioned, Utah was one of the stalwarts of Group of Five football when they played in the Mountain West, along with TCU and Boise State. And then they transitioned into the Pac-12. They stumbled for a couple seasons, gained their footing, increased the recruiting, developed the program, built the depth, and have challenged heavily in the Pac-12, have been one of the better teams and programs in the Pac-12 since then, and have reached the pinnacle the last two years. If Utah would transition to the Big 12, if this does happen, which I don't believe it will, but if Utah is one of those schools that defects because the Pac-12 just can't pony up the money through a media rights deal, Utah is going to be a major factor in the Big 12. There's no question about that. This Utah program is poised for success. Now, Kyle Whittingham's been around for 20-plus years. How long is he going to stay, and how key is he to the success of Utah? Well, he's been uh, integral to that, but has he set up the program for success down the line, and will they hire somebody that can continue that Utah push uh, as one of the top 10 or 15 or 20 programs in all of college football. Utah's recent history against the Big 12 has been bolstered by the schools that have joined Utah in moving from the Pac-12 to the new conference. So let's check out Utah's efforts against these teams in the Pac-12 in 2011 through 2022 that are now joining them in the Big 12. Against Colorado, the Utes have been dominant. 10-2, and two, outscoring the Buffs by 164 points. That's 13.7 per contest. Against Arizona, the Utes are 7-4, and four, which may surprise some people that the Wildcats have held in that well. But, of course, those wins came in the early portion of the 2010s decade when the Wildcats were a much better football team under Rich Rodriguez. The Utes have outscored the Wildcats by 66 points or 6.6 points per game. Against Arizona State, this would be an even bigger surprise that Utah has lost six of 11 contests against Arizona State since joining the Pac-12, being outscored by one point per game. Add it all together, and Utah is 22-12. and 12. That's 219-point advantage over those three teams coming with them from the Pac-12. Utah at 22-12, and 12, and of course, back-to-back Pac-12 championships. Now projecting forward. As long as Kyle Whittingham is leading the Utah program, the Utes are going to be tough. We know that. They're going to be technically sound, fundamental, and poised. They will also win. They got adjusted to the Pac-12, and then they took off and became a perennial bowl team, a perennial top 15 to 25 team. And again, then they reached the zenith in 2021 and won back-to-back Pac-12 championships. Utah is currently the best program in the Big 12. Will that hold? Well, of course, there will be challenges, and Utah is not an elite program, but they will be mighty competitive and will raise the stock of the Big 12 when we talk about uh, advancing to the playoffs and possibly winning playoff games in the future 12-team playoff. Our thoughts about Utah versus the Big 12 want to hear from you in the comments section down below right here at the Voice of College Football.